Right, hello everybody, I'm Product Shard, and today we're here with a review of Castle Storm, an indie game from Zen Studios, which is going to be released on the 29th on Steam. Uh, there's already an Xbox Live arcade version, uh, but this review is going to be of the PC Steam version. Castle Storm is a game which is quite hard to describe quickly. Some people just seem to shout Angry Birds at first sight, but if that's the only mechanic you see while watching the gameplay, then you probably shouldn't be here. The game revolves around a scene in which you, armed with a giant teleporting castle and blister, not the sniper version, like a, a bow kind of version. Uh, you're placed against an opponent. The opponent will sometimes have a castle similar to yours, which you need to beat and destroy, or sometimes just an army which you have to defeat and survive. The campaign does a good job of mixing up all the missions to minimise repetition, but this is the main idea of the game, so immediately some of you may decide that it's not quite for you. Now the campaign itself is great, it eases you into the game slowly, showing you how to play step by step, and then gradually introduces new ammo for your ballista, you get new units and new magical spells. All of these can be used during battles on cooldowns, and all do completely different types of things. Types of ammo range from your standard bolt to bombs to potions, and eventually you get up to some things like lasers. Uh, the units include soldiers and archers and move up to rock giants and dragons, and the spells can damage specific enemies or do AoE damage or can even spawn in a hero which you play as yourself on the battlefield to fend off the enemy yourself. These can all be used to complete most of the levels in one of two ways, either destroying an enemy castle or capturing the enemy flag. A great part of Castle Storm is that you have your own castle and you can edit it however you want. You can make it look nice and sleek and actually like a castle, or you can just build a big fuck off square that, if that's what you're into. But in building it, you can choose from a variety of rooms. The two special rooms that you will kind of be choosing between are those housing a specific unit and those that give you a passive bonus while in the middle of battle. If you want to be able to spawn a certain unit, say one of the rock golems, then you must place that room in your castle. And the stronger the unit, the bigger the room and then kind of the weaker your castle becomes, but that goes into a bit more depth. The rooms that give a passive bonus can be placed at will and have any number, but unless upgraded to a high level, they won't actually grant you very much. After completing levels, you acquire gold, which you can use to spend on upgrading whatever you want. Each skill or room can be upgraded up to 10 times, and the cost increases exponentially, but the actual benefit uh, that you gain from the upgrade actually stays the same each time. This plus the castle building system and the two ways to win really allows you to choose a playstyle, and build both your army and your castle towards it. For example, if you wanted to be able to quickly destroy the enemy castle and win that way, you can level up your cooldown reduction room for your castle and different projectiles, and then just level up some high defense units. This would mean enemy units can't get through to your castle to capture your flag, and you just smash down the enemy's defenses quickly. On the other hand, you can upgrade fast, powerful units to quickly smash down enemy's door, like they have a door in front of their castle and then the flag is behind it. Uh, then they can snatch the flag and run back quickly, and you can level up the magic to support them with heals and like invincibility for a certain amount of time. It's a really clever system, and I think once a player realizes that they can actually tailor everything to a certain playstyle, the game becomes much better. Within the campaign, you're offered the choice to play a bunch of side missions, which are basically there just to allow you to get extra gold. But each of these involves either a special objective, for example surviving a certain amount of time, or earning a certain amount of gold off a certain amount of units that you have to kill, or the others are just a bit mad where you have to go and kill a load of annoying flying turkeys which have a hitbox of about 4 pixels. These missions keep the gameplay fresh and are probably some of the most difficult missions to 5 star. I definitely wouldn't say there's an emphasis on the story component in this game, it's literally only used to change the background scenery or create a scenario why this level you're not allowed to use your army. It does obviously give you some progression and an overlying goal which keeps you playing. But you can't expect to see deep characterization and backstories and such because it's just not that sort of game. Probably the best thing the story brings is halfway through the game, you actually do a kind of reset and start playing with a new army which needs re-upgrading and such. All the units and projectiles need to be re-unlocked but they're all slightly different and it just allows you to maybe choose a different style of play, maybe last time you went for destroying the castle, this time you want to try out getting the flag, or just try out some other units which you didn't bother upgrading before. As well as the campaign, there are a few other arcade style modes that come with the game. These include survival and hero survival game modes. The hero survival mode is where you play as one of four different heroes in the game, and you fight off wave after wave of enemy units. It's really enjoyable once you get the hang of it, even though it does take a while, and you can actually build up some sort of skill and strategy of how to beat different enemies. Each of the heroes has like an attack, a block, and a special attack. 
Uh, so using all four different ones, you can get to different waves, you can play in a different style. And the more you play it, the more enjoyable it does become. The same can't be said for the normal survival mode as you're placed against waves of units and you have your castle and ballista and your normal units that you can spawn and your spells and such. It sounds like nothing is wrong but after a few games you realise how far you get doesn't rely on skill of shot placement or unit choice or anything like that but mostly the level you've upgraded your stuff to. If you want to get to the top of the leaderboards or to a de decent wave you'll have to just grind it out for extra gold to max everything out unfortunately. The way I'd prefer to see it done is that you start with everything at level 1 and after each wave you get to spend your earned gold from the previous wave on upgrades and such and this means you can tailor your way to play but when you die you lose everything you reset all the rooms and all the units back to level 1 and you start over. This way the grinding aspect disappeared and if you want to get further you'd actually have to find more ways of getting more gold from each wave like multi kills and kill streaks and headshots and it would just bring a lot more skill in but that is just an idea. Castle Storm has a ranked online versus system where you start with a new pool of cash and everything at level 1 and you can only upgrade the stuff you use online with the money you earn from online battles. This starts everyone off at a level playing field and you can choose how to upgrade your stuff but also means that if you've played the most you'll never really have a challenge as such as no one will ever have as much gold as you and your stuff will just be a higher level. You'll just have to wait for everyone else to max stuff out as well. Unfortunately only about 8 people have actually played the online at this point so I haven't had much of a look at it but there is a level system which means you're put into ranked matches so you're against players of a similar standard or with the same amount of gold and you can choose the kingdom you want and the only problem I had while playing it uh, against Mr. Super Jolly, link in the description, was a really high ping that we had between us but that may just be our terrible connections. Overall there aren't really any problems with Castle Storm, everything is completable if you figure out how to do it. The online seems solid but I'll admit it doesn't seem to be a selling point for the game as you do need like a really big community to actually keep it going say a month after release. The campaign is great fun and with some good ideas on how to make it stand out and not get repetitive and the only thing that kind of frustrated me was the lack of some audio components. The soldiers and different units could do with a few more sentences that they say as you realise after about three levels that you've gone full circle and they're repeating everything again. It's not game breaking at all, it just meant that I usually listen to music in the background while playing it. Now the only other real negative is that the game did seem to crash quite a lot on the pre-release build when using alt tab to switch back to your desktop to say change a song or something, but after reporting a different multiplayer bug on Twitter it was resolved within a couple of hours, which I found amazingly quick so any bugs I feel be ironed out. Now if you've liked what you've been seeing in the background or you're just a bit intrigued by this game, I would definitely recommend picking it up. It's only 7 quid, I don't know what that is in dollars, but it's probably like 10. Uh, this game is definitely worthwhile, as the campaign took me a good 7-8 hours to complete, and even after that I've now got 16 hours gameplay in the game, because this is the first game ever that I've actually gone back and 5 starred every level. Even on the second playthrough I was enjoying myself with every level, and just kept wanting to go back onto Castle Storm and play it some more, to the point that I was actually pretty sad when I'd completed it all. It's a brilliantly designed game with a lot more depth than you think at first glance and it's actually very very enjoyable to play and just put me in a good mood whenever I turned it on. For the price that Castle Storm comes at and the level of gameplay that you get from it in the hours of time it gets a high 9 out of 10 from me. I realise that some people won't like this genre and it's just not for them so if this type of game just isn't enjoyable to you then obviously don't buy it. But for those people that have played games like it before, like Bowmaster and uh, I don't know many others like it, but if you have and it looks interesting to you, then I would definitely recommend picking this up. It has been a great lot of fun for me uh, and given me a lot more kind of enjoyment and time than I actually thought uh, when I watched trailers and stuff. But it is brilliant and I would definitely recommend picking it up. Also, if you pick it up now, I think it's 10% off on Steam or something, so... If it does interest you, go and pre-order it, and if you're reading, well, watching this after release, then it, it really is worth it for the 7 quid. Finally, thanks to Zen Studios for the pre-release copy. They can be found over at their website or over at their Twitter, at Zen underscore studios, if you want to talk to them. If you have any other questions about the game, or I forgot to mention something critical, then please leave it in the comments, and I will answer all the questions as best that I can with the knowledge I've gained from the game. 
Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if this was helpful and consider subscribing if you enjoy indie games or you're looking for more reviews like this in the future. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you again soon.